Okay, you get the point. So in summary, society advises you to follow your heart because it is basically good. Now another movement shaker was a guy him here, Carl Rogers, and he says this. He says, I do not find that evil is inherent in human nature. And because of him and others, there is this idea that, oh, I think people are inherently good. Once I saw a talk show of various leaders of various religions having a discussion. And when it came to the issue of evil, the Christian representative said, human beings are inherently evil, and the whole place erupted like a Jerry Springer show. You know, it's like, how dare you say that you are something and swear words are flying around. And he's like, mm, I rest my case. Abraham Maslow, further on, says, as far as I know, we just don't have any intrinsic instinct for evil. Next slide. If you think in terms of the basic needs, instinct at least, at the outset, are all good. Careful study of them will provide the values we need by which better societies can evolve. I see David Jones manifesting right there. All right. So this is how you point to ourselves. Since this inner nature is good, or neutral, rather than bad, it is best to bring it out and to encourage it rather than to suppress it. If it is permitted to guide our life, we grow healthy, fruitful, and happy. Is that what we see around the world when we simply look at it? In a moment, I'm going to show you a news montage of various news stories about the worst of humanity. And I do have to warn you, it's got some disturbing images. I will break an M. So if you're a bit sensitive, just close your eyes and stop your ears, okay? But here's the news montage. Let it play. From the serial killer who called himself BTK for buying to torture and kill. I was also undressed, got on top of her, I took the belt and then strangled her, killed me. The father of six, Kenneth Bridges, was killed with a shot in the back. A sniper with a high-powered rifle. We don't even know what direction the shot came from. In Spain, powerful explosions ripped through three Madrid train stations. All were packed with commuters in the midst of the rush hour. China's children are at once the promise and the threat of the future. How do you dictate one child per family? Now six months pregnant, Nance Wei has agreed to have an abortion. Lyle and Eric decided to strike before their parents could occur. There's no end in sight to the nightmarish bloodbath in Rwanda. Aid workers now say up to 500,000 people have died in a month of civil war and tribal massacres. It began midday yesterday when the suspect opened fire in the school's parking lot. And they were shooting anyone. The mad rush and panic at a food distribution center today was just a small example of the violent spread of poverty and corruption that grips Eastern Zaire. South Central Los Angeles, we're seeing a dark day here in Los Angeles. This is attempted murder, but nobody's helping. Unbelievable. Jeffrey Dahmer killed 17 young men. I know that I will have to turn to God to help me get through each day. I should have stayed with God. I tried and failed and created the Holocaust. Now, obviously, these are extreme examples. It's when this advice is taken to the nth degree. However, even a step in that direction still shows you that there's problems with this advice. Jeremiah 79 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately so. <laughs> Who can understand it? Following a heart that is not just sick, but desperately sick, and that not just deceives us, but deceives us above all things, can never be good 
advice to take. Following your heart only works is if the heart is intact. But if the heart is not intact, then following it will cause destruction. And when we think about this advice that has been given to us, how can we turn away from the reality of the consequences of that advice? We have a world full of people who are just simply following their inner desires. Now, I'm not saying that all desires are bad, but I'm saying if we always follow our heart, there's going to be issues. In fact, follow your heart is the same bad advice from the snake in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 to 5, the serpent says to Eve, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of the fruit of the good of good and evil, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Or in contemporary terms, if you follow your heart to self-actualize, to be all you can be, you're going to be like God. When they were already made in God's image, start off with. And yet, the lie of the serpent is still here today. Get in touch with your inner person. Let him or her flourish. If you let him or her guide your life, then you'll be healthy, fruitful, and happy. This is following your heart. And the consequences of following your heart are humongous. So here's the question. If we are basically good, the question is, why is there evil in the world? In fact, this is a question that non-believers often ask Christians as a trump card to go, ha ha, try to answer that question. If God is all loving and all powerful, why is there evil in the world? Now, that's an separate message over here. But you know you can turn the table saying, well, if humanity, if you and I are so good, why is there evil in the world? Please explain. Ba -bang. And here's the answer that society tries to give. Society claims that it is bad circumstances that make us evil. We're not evil. The circumstances make us evil. The devil made me do it. A Swiss philosopher by the name of Jean-Jacques Rousseau said, if a man is good by nature and not naughty by nature, which was a hip-hop band in the 90s, which you would know for. All right. um, if a man is good by nature, as I believe to have shown him to be, it follows that he stays like that as long as nothing foreign to him corrupts him. Man was born free, but everywhere he is in chains. And what Jean-Jacques Rousseau was referring to was like a Christianity. He said Christianity binds us. It gives us no freedom. You can't do this. You can't do that. Get rid of it, and we will be happy. The Word of God says, Psalm 2, 1 to 3. He has his answer to this. Why do the nations rage? Another translation is, why do the people of various ethnic cultures rage? And the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, that is Christ, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. Get away with all this restriction of what is right and wrong. Why do people do this? So that we can do what we want to do. And watch out if something gets in the way. Because I want to follow my heart and that's the unquestionable advice and truth. Coming back to our friend Carl Rogers. He says, for myself though, I am very well aware of the incredible, destructive, cruel, malevolent behavior in today's world. Okay, he's not living under a rock, he realizes this. From the threats of war to the senseless violence in the street, yet I do not find that this evil is inherent in human nature. Okay, let's keep going. So, my question is, if evil doesn't come from our nature, where does it come from? Abraham tries to answer this. He says, sick people are made by a sick culture. Healthy people are made possible by a healthy culture. And Carl adds, 
Experience leads me to believe that it is cultural influences which are the major factor in our evil behavior. So we're not evil, but the culture is evil. What is culture made up of? People. <laughs> okay? So society has to respond by saying that it is something else that brings evil. Not us. Because we're basically good. And this is another reason why we live in a culture of constant blame. One of the major STDs, spiritually transmitted diseases, is blamatitis. Yeah. If you don't believe me, you look at our leaders. Constantly one party blaming the other. Never hearing a positive... I, I, I wait for the day where Bill Shorten says, Malcolm, that was a really good idea! Thank you! <laughs> no! All I hear is, me, 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 me. Okay? Complain, complain, and blame. And we need to be careful that that, that doesn't rub off on us. You see, once our culture cuts itself off from God, and with Him, the answer to the universal question of who we are, then our culture assumes we're good. We're good by nature. Mental health and happiness comes through self-actualization, getting in touch with your real good self. And so example, things like guilt are seen as always bad. Oh, don't feel guilty. Don't really feel guilty because it makes me feel bad. What if you are guilty? Now obviously there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but there are times when guilt can be a good thing. Interesting enough, a, a psychiatrist by the name of Theodore Darren, love his first name, Theodore. Um, he is not a Christian, and yet he has worked in the psychiatric ward of hospitals for years, and he has seen the reality of the consequences of this bad advice that is destroying people and is what is left in our culture. So let's listen to what Theo has to say. Rousseau's idea was that all the imperfections of man were attributable to social causes and that man was naturally good and if you got rid of all the artificialities that there were in society uh, and man returned to a natural state uh, he would be uh, very good. And of course it's a very convenient idea because it means all you have to do to be good is to be your true self. And since your true self is really doing exactly what you like, then doing what you like, exactly what you like, becomes virtue. One patient said to me, I had to kill a doctor or, or I don't know what I would have done. And what he actually means by that is that unless he expresses himself, unless he lets out his emotion, in this case by killing his wife, uh, something really terrible would happen to him. So the mere death of his wife uh, was not very important by comparison with what might have happened to him had he not killed his wife. And actually, uh, as I tell many of my patients, you don't need to find yourself, you need to lose yourself. You need to have something which transcends yourself in order to make your life meaningful. And that's impossible if you're constantly referring to yourself as the be-all and uh, end-all of your existence. And I think actually Francis Bacon said it in an essay, he said, it is a poor center of a man's life himself. Not a Christian. <laughs> he got an understanding that, again, extreme example of the wife killer, but the principle applies. He, society is constantly advising you it's all about you. And if you really want to be happy, then you must follow your own script, your own desires, your own internal needs, your own heart. And yet I think after all this, we can safely say this is very bad, catastrophic advice. 
Because we are not called to follow our inner sinful desires. Romans 8.13 says, For if you live according to the flesh, the sinful desire, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Colossians 3, 5 to 10 really hits it home. Have a look at this. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. 